Hello, this is Pastor Nick Hood, and today I want to talk to you about listening for the voice of God. I believe that God talks to us all the time. Uh, one of the problems is uh, sometimes we can't hear it. And we can't hear the voice of God because one, we're not listening for it. Two, maybe we're too consumed with everything else that uh, we have to deal with. And frankly, uh, in today's world, life is full of things we have to deal with. Uh, I'm at a park in Detroit right now called Maharis Gentry Park. And it's right down on the Detroit River. Uh, I like this little rock formation behind me uh, because it's easy for me to sit. But one of the things I also like about this area is that uh, if you listen carefully, you can hear the sounds of nature. There are birds talking, geese, ducks, the sound of the water. Sometimes I come out here and I just sit. And I sit because I know if I sit long enough, still long enough, that the voice of God will come to me. I had an interesting experience yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was feeling a little sorry for myself. Anybody looking at this ever feel sorry for yourself? <laughs> I was feeling a little sorry for myself because my brother had gone out of town and, uh, you know, I didn't want to bother him. He was having a little vacation. And yesterday was Sunday morning. Now, even though I wasn't preaching Sunday morning, I had a guest preacher, um, I have a Sunday morning routine. And part of my Sunday morning routine is when I leave the house, I try to leave in enough time to get to the church by 7.30 in the morning. Our first service is at 8.30. So usually, when I'm riding down the street to church, I pick up the phone and I call my brother. And I usually, you know, during a pandemic, I think I've preached all but now three sermons, actually two sermons. And, um, you know, a young man that I want to bring here in the fall to Detroit as an associate minister, Jamar Boyd, preached a virtual sermon for me yesterday. So technically, I didn't have to quote unquote work. My father-in-law, when I married uh, Denise said, face it, Nick, you only work one day a week. You know, he thought that was real funny. Uh, <laughs> and I still think it's funny. But uh, the ramp up for me to preach is pretty intense. And so normally on the way to church, I call my brother and I uh, tell him what I'm preaching about. Then I ask him, what do you think about it? What would you add or subtract from this message? And Steve is, you know, pretty good uh, with that, uh, very insightful, and I like that. But it dawned on me yesterday, with Steve being out of town, I said, who do I have to talk with about my sermon? And my wife was getting on me. She said, you can talk to me, you can talk to me. I said, Denise, you're asleep you know, at 7.15 in the morning. But, uh, so this is not a slight against my wife, but, you know, part of my routine for the last several years, I mean, we're talking about 20, 25, 30, almost 35 years. I call my brother and I tell him what I'm preaching about. But yesterday it dawned on me that I said, what would I do if he dies before I do? Um, who would fill that void on Sunday morning where I could talk to people uh, about my sermon, that last conversation before I get up in the pulpit and preach. And uh, so I started to write a blog about it yesterday. And just it, and I was pitting, it was a pity party. The, the title of the blog, I invite you to look at it. It's on wordpress.com, Nicholas Hood III Ministries. But I entitled the blog, My Circle, is growing closer. Because I started thinking about it, I said, if my brother dies, who will fill that void? Yeah, you know, I have other friends, don't get me wrong. I have a wife, don't get me wrong. But for that particular little niche, uh, my brother is filling it right now. And uh, just as I was concluding my pity party, I got a text message. And I said, I wonder who's texting me right now. So rather than hit the publish button on my blog, 
I picked up the phone. I said, let me see who's texting me. And it was a guy named Walt Young, Dr. Walt Young. He's a dentist, pretty well-known dentist in Atlanta. And uh, Walt and his older brother, Andrew, uh, are probably the two of the first male role models I had in life in New Orleans uh, beyond my own father. Uh, and they tell the story how when I was a little boy, and we're talking about little, like a newborn, that they used to toss me back and forth because they wanted to quote unquote toughen me up. And my mother, you know, was horrified. My father probably laughed. Their father and their mother became my godparents. So it's a very close relationship. But um, anyway, Walt keeps in touch with me. He's part of my text ministry. Matter of fact, anybody looking at this, if you want to be on the text ministry where I send out a Bible verse every day, uh, just, you know, text me or email me. Uh, let me know your phone number and I will send you a text Bible verse every day. So I've been texting Walt for the last couple years. And uh, yesterday I get a, a text message from Walt and I'm saying, what is he saying? And it says simply Philippians 4, 19. Now, I know the book of Philippians pretty well, but I couldn't remember exactly uh, what verse 4, 19 is. So I stopped what I was doing. I picked up the Bible, opened it up to Philippians 4, 19. And there it was like the voice of God was slapping me in the face in the midst of my pity party. The voice said, uh, or the word said, and my God uh, will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. And you know, friends, I felt like I had a spiritual moment at that point. I felt like that was a spiritual moment. I felt like the hand of God picked up my hands from my computer to my telephone so I could look up and be jolted into a spiritual uh, reality uh, that God will supply your every need. If, if Steve dies before I do, God will supply my need. If I uh, am without people to talk to, God will supply my every need. And the same is true for you. I don't know what you're going through in life. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody looking at this who feels like you are spiritually empty, financially dry, uh, you know, emotionally uh, just cast out. But I want you to know God will supply your every need. That's the word that I leave you today. My God will supply your every need according to his riches that are in glory. God bless. God keep you. And remember, I am praying for you.